the uh, issue of space threats has, has reached um, uh, a real level of urgency um, uh, to the point that the, the country is making a, uh, a pretty substantial uh, investment um, in space protection systems um, over the next five years. So I'm wondering, as we look at this new threat environment, um, whether that increases or, or diminishes uh, any potential role for commercial. And I'm going to start uh, uh, Winston off with that one. Thank, thanks, Warren. It's important to note that the way we've acquired space systems for the past several decades uh, was on the basis of something called functional availability, which is a metric that's designed to estimate how long a space system will last uh, so that we can plan uh, to inject its replacement right at the point of failure. Uh, and that is an approach that might make sense in a benign environment, but as you just laid out, that's not the environment we find ourselves in anymore. And so we're moving away from functional availability as an approach for replacement to one where we account for the threat. To do that requires a, a, a different metric of success. And so we're, we're using something we're calling a resiliency capacity that includes a mission assurance component to it. Um, now, as you said, there are uh, considerations of um, uh, anti-jam, of um, the ability to uh, operate through a threat environment, and those are certainly important ones, but there's, there's multiple components and, and attributes that need to be considered when you look at overall resiliency, and we, we, uh, we take each of them into account when we look at our resiliency approach for each mission element of the architecture. And for commercial SATCOM, um, we're looking at that in context with our uh, military SATCOM environment. And, and I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that just because commercial SATCOM systems don't have the protections that the military systems have, that they are in any way, uh, that they're less contributing to a resiliency architecture. In fact, the fact of diversity of uh, these systems in and of itself contributes to resiliency. And so that's why our approach going forward includes working with industry to ensure that the types of protection measures which are inherent in the new designs that industry is going forward with anyway, so for example, uh, new digital waveforms, uh, the ability to do beam forming, uh, which are necessary, as Kay said, for uh, countering interference, also happen to help you with some of the threats that, that we're concerned about. And so I think there's a real convergence on the technology side. The key is to be able to get convergence on the policy side so that we can operate more seamlessly between military and commercial systems. So we've heard so far that um, security is, is, is this continuum. Um, uh, so on one end you have your standard bent pipe C or KU band satellite commercial platform, uh, uh, no encryption, no protection. On the other hand you have AEHF. Where do you see commercial now in that continuum? And is it where it needs to be? And I'll start off, uh, I guess, with, with you on that, Joe, but I want to give uh, Rick an opportunity to chime in. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of math to get to the specific answer. You know, what does the threat look like in terms of decibel watts? And you have to add up a lot of functions, beam size. There's a lot of technical particulars to be able to get to that. Let's say WGS is here on the continuum. AEHF is here. Where is commercial? Is commercial here? Is it here? Generally, commercial will be less. Right? But you know, some of the high capacity systems that are put out there, there's some math indicating maybe it's pretty competitive with WGS. WGS is a high capacity system. So it's, it's, uh, it handles uh, uh, the nuisance threat and the interference threat, probably some high order jamming. It, it won't, won't cover that, but there could be a great deal of customer base unserved with any capability for which a commercial AJ capability could be useful. So our PTW product is targeting that and hopefully the rest of the architecture will come together and offer user some uh, good value. Thanks, Rick. When you say security, it means a lot of things. I mean, everything from, uh, you know, anti-jam to uh, crypto. I mean, we, we, run, we run encryption on our commercial systems. We can run type 1 encryption on our commercial systems. But let, let me switch to the anti-jam uh, portion. Um, the high-throughput satellites uh, today with the multiple beams do give you some degree of protection. Uh, you add some other things that I, I know Intelsat and SCR are, are working. You start increasing it on the satellite side. And then more importantly, you start working the ground modem, uh, say the PTW waveform, and, and there are others. 
and you start building up, I, I think, a pretty, big cap pretty good capability uh, very rapidly. You can't forget the resiliency part of it. I mean, uh, a billion dollar satellite that is absolutely bulletproof and, and gets you know, taken out by an ASAT, uh, do you want one of those or, or do you want uh, 20 bent pipes that are operating with uh, you know, an anti-jam modem? So it, it's a trade-off. So as we talk about the um, protection and we talk about this, the speed of the threat, uh, which we have to keep up with, I think one of the downsides to a big government program of record like WGS is it's very hard to insert any kind of significant technological advancements because by acquisition rules, you can't uh, change the program very much or you have to go out and recompete it. So when you move to a commercial model and you move to buying capability that's being put on orbit by commercial operators, we're inserting technology with every new spacecraft. So we don't have that program of record problem, that technology insertion problem. And when you look at the space threat, I think that's going to be something we need to think about because we might need to add capability fast, new technology insertion fast, and we can't really do that in a major program of record model. 